Okay, here we are back again for another Vassal tutorial. This one is the uh, player tutorial. So, um, oops, let's probably slow things down just a bit. What I did was... Went in here, if you don't have it already in there, you'll have to hit uh, Open Module, find out where you put it, or downloaded it to. I like to keep mine organized and put them in one spot, so I go to C, Games, Apps, Vassal, and then you'll see D20 mod right there. I would double click it or just click open and it would be good to go. Mine's already in the list, so I'll just double click it. And I'll uh, minimize this little window. Shortly a new window should come up. It's a splash screen. Since this is the uh, player tutorial, you don't have to worry about going offline. We're just going to go online and look for a game that's already running. When I come in here... It will join me online. So I'll see I'm in the main room by myself, and there's no other rooms made at the moment. But um, as a player, you wouldn't be making a game. You'd actually be looking for a game. So you just come in here. Say you see uh, this room, and there's uh, one person in it. It's probably your DM. So you join that room, and you'd be like, hey, what's going on? Because you got this IRC chat right here. And uh, whenever he's ready to go... He'll tell you, let you know, you just right click on his name and hit this uh, synchronize. It's grayed out right now, but when you're in a, ready for a real game, it will let you just click on it. So you just click synchronize and uh, wait a minute and it will ask you what player you want to be. For now, to show you what that would look like, we're going to hit new game and click uh, player 2. So uh, he would be player 1, the DM, and now you jump in player as player 2. Uh, right now it's blank, but you would see the DM's map already set up right here. Any figures he had on the map would already be shown to you. And you could just look at them and you'd be waiting and ready to go. Now, you don't have a lot of options as the player. You just got race, classes, the dice, the shop, your hand. You can't see anyone else's. The DM can actually see everybody's, including your hand. So if you're cheating, it's your hand. Uh, you can access the figures here, so you can find the p figure you want to be. Typically, you'd want to be either a hero, a DM, or there's a uh, there's a hero portraits up here in the top left. And then you just find out what portrait or whatever do chick or whatever you want to be. It's going to be uh, well, that's the classic fighter picture. Of, looks like a dragonborn fighter. I think that one's kind of ugly, so I'm just going to go with this uh, cleric chick right here. And uh, you close that. And uh, you set it on the screen. The DM might take your figure, or he might leave it for you. You can move it yourself, too. Right now, there is no stipulations on um, you moving your own character. You and the DM can both move it. Uh, for later editions, we might lock these characters so that only the DM can move them, or allow you to move them, and he can give you the option and turn it off and on just because I've noticed while playing so far in beta testing that some of the uh, players will get bored or just uh, not knowing what the story is or what's going on. They're like, yeah, yeah, and I move over here. And they just like, you're like, wait, wait, wait. And you've got to grab it and put it back here and say, okay, when you got to here, you triggered a trap, blah, blah, blah. It gets kind of touchy and you're like, no, 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 I jumped it. So you look, and now I'm over here and now I'm over here. And so if they get bored, they can just go nuts. So that might be locked later, so behave um, for now. But uh, so you can click on your character, do whatever you want. In fact, you can uh, you can't turn it invisible. That's only for the DM. To, you can clone it, which is kind of useless for now because then the DM will just delete the clone. But uh, and then you can go ahead and it gave you these options to turn it on its side as if it was hurt or dazed or prone, and um, turn it back up. And you can do that to kind of help the DM out. Or to be like, look, I'm drunk, and then you fall down. Whatever. So, you've got your character. If you accidentally delete your character, you just have to uh, go back here. The last one you had selected will be ready, and you just pick it out again. So, it's not, not too much trouble with the characters. Uh, Dean will probably just pick up your character and put it in his hand for now until he starts telling the story. And then he'll place your characters on the map wherever he wants them. So, uh, then your character will appear, and you'll be playing. 
before you get to the play moment, though, you'll want to put some things in your hand. You'll notice this uh, player two table space you have right here is uh, personal just for you. No one else can see it but you and the DM. And uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to come in here and find your race. There are uh, eight races for now. And I uh, will say that you're a human. We'll stick that down here in your hand. And you notice it appeared right there. It's always going to show you the back whenever it's not clicked. So if you want it to lock, you just right click and say mask, and then it will always show you the back. Right now they're kind of hard to read, so what you do is you just change your view zoom level. You can hit uh, plus or minus, or you can just click the middle one and go straight to it. I like to go to about 100%, should be good for most things. And then you come in here and you can read it average height, weight, ability scores. You get plus two to the ability score of your choice at level one. Says your size, your speed, and um, a lot of times this information, once you get it onto your uh, character sheet, won't be hugely important. So you can just um, put it back. Oops, I made the screen too big. Just put it right there. Bam, bam. Okay. Because uh, you're not really going to need that after level one. What you will need, however, is your class. So uh, here we have a uh, cleric. Go here and pick this cleric card, and you can see right away your class traits and all that. Um, there's a lot of uh, ch um, stuff the cleric has, so you can come in here and see the rest of it. Your features, if you want to see those. Um, Divine Oracle. That's your Paragon Pass, I believe. And then you're going to have your healing word. You're going to have some channel divinity. And uh, you see they're red, so they're all going to be dailies. There's a whole bunch of junk you can grab for now. And then your level 1, hopefully you'll, you'll know what your uh, levels are. Here's your uh, spells. These are your powers. And your level 1 powers are all right there. And you just pick out the ones that you can use at the time. Stick them over in your hand. And uh, your hand will probably get a little bit bulky. I tend to put the uh, all these kind of over here. And then put all my spells right here, because you're not really going to need to see your uh, class as much. And then every time you load up your hand, you can just see your spells right away, whatever you can do. And you can scroll up and down and find your spells real quick, like. And then you do, if you exit out, it's okay. You just click it again, brings it right back. And then you can see exactly how you had it, and you're ready to go. Like, okay, I want to do Sacred Flame this time. And they'll be like, okay, what is that? Oh, that's Wisdom versus Reflex. You can read it right there on the card. And uh, then you just you do your move. So that is that. we got figures. Over here are some tables. These are some things to help you out as well as the DM. There are um, some uh, feats in here. If you draw specific, you can see uh, a big list of feats. And uh, for your level ups, you'll want to be able to look at that. Also, for your level ups, there is advancement, which on this card, it'll show you um, how much experience you need for each level, what you gain at each level, like if, uh, at level 4, if you get uh, uh, ability scores, you gain a feat. You'll know three feats total by then, unless you're human, because you got a bonus, so it'll actually be four. And then at the end of this one, you can see it's gone kind of almost invisible. But over there on the uh, right corner side, you can see where it says like 2, 4 slash 1, 4 slash 1, 4 slash 1. If you can read it, whenever you move this card here, we'll just put it on the uh, board. Oh, did I grab the right card? I must have. Must have not, actually. Advancement, okay. Yeah, we'll grab it. It's even better if you put it in your uh, if you put it in your hand. I just right clicked and said return to deck and it puts it back where you got it from. Say I want to put it in my hand and take a look at it. And this might perturb some other people, but I need to take a look real quick. So I am just going to take a look here. I'm level one, so I'll have uh, to check my race and my class to so see my information. I'll typically, know one feet unless I got a special. I'll know two at wills, one daily or one encounter and one daily, no utilities. So uh, that's how that goes, and then you just put it back where you got it, so everyone else can get to it. Now, in there also is, uh, over here, some pre-made uh, characters. Well, pre-made characters. you got, like, Tiefling Warlord, Human Wizard, Halfling Rogue, Half-Elf Cleric, 
some wizards, rogue, fighter, clerics. So just some basic stuff to get you going. These will all be at level one, and uh, all these ones at the top that say the uh, race before the class, they will be these uh, colorful ones. And these colorful ones actually show you what you get at second level and even third level. You can see it's right down there. What you'll it's some pre-made stuff, but if you don't want to choose that, it uh, doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, these other ones that were class forced, and then the uh, race is, uh, they're all just going to be black and white, and uh, they're just level 1, and they don't give you any extra information for level 2 or 3. But uh, it's enough to get you going. Then you had your, uh, your dazed stuff for, like, marked targets. That's a really good one to know. Petrified, prone, unconscious. It's just the, um, whatever they're called. Actions is another good one that you might want to take a look at. It's the actions you can do during your turn. Standard actions, move actions, minor actions, immediate, opportunity, and free actions. And it gives you a brief description on what all those are. It's kind of like a DM screen, but the players can look at it too. The DM will actually have a better um, DM screen that's just for himself. So uh, once you hop in the game, you'll see that, and uh, the, the DM will talk you through it. You might appear in a room, and and you'll appear, uh, walk around, and some guys will appear right in front of you that the DM has control over. He'll just put a bunch of guys in there and say, uh, roll initiative, and you'll do that, D20, plus uh, your initiative, say, plus 3, so 18 plus 3. You'll just tell the DM that you rolled a 21 right then, and uh, he'll take care of that. So uh, then you'll start fighting. you got your movements on here. We're shifting around, and uh, the DM might make them invisible. You see, you don't have the option for that, but when they are invisible, they will be gone. You will not see them or have the option to click on them at all as a player. You can still clone them to be annoying. I'm probably going to put a lock on that, though. But uh, So that's the basics. That's all you really need. Uh, the DM will tell you when to look at the... Uh, the shop and stuff. Here's the basic armor. It's only the most basic kind of stuff right now in the shop. Um, you can put that in your hand to look at it as well. And you can see that it's got like a um, leather armor. Gives you plus two. Tells you the information that you'll need. And you'll just have to run your... Uh, what most people do is they run their um, card. Their, it's actually a D20 modern that I made. Um, they'll run their Oh, she was this called? The character sheet. Their character sheet separate. And uh so you can just keep that minimized and bring it up and down whenever you need. And I don't know why that popped up. We'll just set it off to the side. But yeah, so you'll, whenever you're playing you'll bring your uh, character sheet up and uh get the information off if you want whatever you need, you can update it. Right now I'm looking at a JPG but uh there's some editable PDFs that I'm going to try to host for as long as I can. They're just uh, Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition player sheets, and they are uh, editable. You can click in the boxes, and then you can change the uh, the things. And that's actually my favorite one. I just keep it minimized. I bring it up. I play with my character sheet. And then I've got my spells right here. So uh, between all that, it's really pretty much good to go. And the DM handles the rest. So uh, that's basic. When you leave, it'll ask you if you want to save. You, as a player, pretty much never need to save. Only the DM really needs to save because uh, he'll be the one to load it up and you'll just join his game. So I'll click no, it'll close it down, and uh, that's the end of this tutorial. Look for more tutorials to come.